What's up, my people? This is Showbiz the Adult. All right, man, look. All right, man, look. So, I had a show business partner. Uh, he reached out to me in, on Instagram, DM'd me. You guys can do the same thing if you want to reach out to me. He asked me, hey, how was that Mike Tyson Undisputed? I saw you reading that um, in your last video. So it made me uh, want to cut this video um, listening to Custom Model, reading a few things that he said in that book and breaking it down and applying it to things that we've seen when we're watching an event, a boxing event. Uh, for, hold up, coffee. You know, I picked up this uh, Smoking Joe Frazier, uh, The Life of Joe Frazier book by Mark Cram Jr. today. And it's so funny, um, I was reading it uh, in the bookstore, and I had to pick it up, and he says something in here, Mark Cram Jr. says something in here that echoes what I said in a video prior, okay? The video about um, hitting and not getting hit, is that the name of the game? Here's what Mark Cram said about smoking Joe Frazier. His way was the hard way. In the ring, he lived and died by the simple yet daring principle of engagement that in order to deliver one bone crushing blow, it was frequently necessary to absorb three in exchange. Didn't I say that? That's a part of some people's game. Some boxers, their chin is a part of their talent. It's not the name of the game isn't to hit and not get hit. That's the name of the game for a style for this guy. There's guys who want who needs to absorb your punches so they can land a bone crushing left hook like Joe Frazier. They take your will away. Your three punches meant nothing. I didn't feel them. Here's one of mine. I break your soul down. I break you down psychologically. So let's read what Custom Auto said. Like I said, hitting and not get hit is very important, but that's not the be all to boxing. OK. All right, so <clears throat> let's read something that uh, first I'm going to read uh, the quote by a uh, custom model that I read before. So for those who may have missed it, my last video. You think you know the difference between a hero and a coward, Mike? Well, there was no difference between a hero and a coward in what they feel. It's what they do that makes them different. The hero and the coward feel exactly the same, but you have to have the discipline to do what a hero does and to keep yourself from doing what a coward does. That's when I brought up Andy Ruiz. OK, the fact that he could have stayed on the canvas after being knocked down by AJ. He could have looked at himself. He never been knocked down before. He didn't. I don't like the way it feels. And then his body instinctively, he could have emotionally tapped into what a coward does. No, nah, he did what a hero does. Made him victorious that night. All right. So check this out. Another uh, custom auto quote. Your mind is not your friend, Mike. I hope you know that. You have to fight with your mind. Control it. Put it in its place. You have to control your emotions. Fatigue in the ring is 90% psychological. It's just the excuse of a man who wants to quit. The night before a fight, you won't sleep. Don't worry. The other, the other guy, he didn't either. You'll go to the weigh-in. He'll look much bigger than you and calmer like ice. But he's burning up with fear inside. Your imagination is going to credit him with abilities he doesn't have. Remember, motion relieves tension. The moment the bell rings and you come into contact with each other, suddenly your opponent seems like everybody else. Because now your imagination has dissipated. The fight itself is the only reality that matters. You have to learn to impose your will and take control over the reality. I read that because I want us to understand fighters. What we tend to do is we sit back and we look at the boxing event and we look at them as just entertainment for us. Then we go on YouTube and then we make comments and then we just talk as if they weren't people in there that were afraid to death. 
See, uh, the, the, the time before the weigh-in, they're afraid. During the weigh-in, they're looking at him, and then he looks like a monster. They're imagine, uh, imagining losing to this guy with all these abilities. And then they, they, it transcends over to the ring. But then once they start touching each other, hey, you're a living and breathing man just like me. These guys go from fear to confident. There's things going on, psychological and emotional changes going on that we're missing. Boxing has a lot, okay? The fight is a lot. But we forget that. We sit back and we make comments. We call people a bum. He's nobody. Oh, he has a loss. He should quit. Danny Garcia, he has two losses. He's nobody now. We're not in tune with the fighters. All right. So this is uh, Custom Auto. Don't forget, Custom Auto, he trained Rocky Graciano in amateurs. Okay. Trained Floyd Patterson, the youngest heavyweight champion, until he trained Mike Tyson, the youngest heavyweight champion. All right. So um, here, here's the last one I'm going to read. Actually, there's one more after this. Customato. Cus told me that to be a great fighter, you had to get out of your own head. He would have me sit down and he'll say, transcend, focus, relax until you see yourself looking at yourself. Tell me when you get there. That was very important for me. This is Mike talking. I'm way too emotional in general. Later on, I realized that if I didn't separate from my feelings inside the ring, I would be sunk. I might hit a guy with a hard punch and then get scared if he didn't go down. The reason why I read that is because I think that's very revealing. It's the reason why I say Muhammad Ali would beat Mike Tyson. Think about the first line. To be a great fighter, you have to get out of your own head. Muhammad Ali would, would beat Mike Tyson before he steps in the ring and then he'll beat him again. He will make Mike Tyson present. He wouldn't let him escape. He'll be looking at him like, you're too small. You're too ugly to be champ. We got a gorilla. Look how he speaks. He doesn't sound tough. Ali will be in his butt, in his head, pause. But in the ring, Ali will be doing the same thing. You can't hit me. I'm too fast. I'm too pretty. Not a mark on my face. You can't hurt me. What's my name? He will make Mike Tyson present the entire time. Kind of like Evander Holyfield. When he hit Evander Holyfield, Holyfield didn't go anywhere. He was scared stiff. The second fight, look at the stare down. Tyson didn't look that confident. He was present. Evander Holyfield. He was just uh, primal. That's the difference. Here's the last thing. Cuss was a strong believer that in your mind, you had to be an entity that you wanted to be. If you wanted to be the heavyweight champion of the world, you had to start living life like the heavyweight champion. I hope Andy Ruiz is listening. Those are great words from Customato. Andy Ruiz, he said, yeah, I'll take the AJ fight. I'll take the rematch. And then I want Deontay Wilder next. He sees himself as a great heavyweight champion. So if he believes himself to be a great heavyweight champion, that's what he's going to be. Showbiz the dope. I hope you guys, uh, you know, like hearing that from Custom Model, the late Custom Model. It's almost like hearing a ghost speak. It's a great thing. And like I said, uh, Mike Tyson, Undisputed Truth, uh, New York Times bestseller. I know a few of you guys read it already. And Mark Cram Jr. doing Smokey, uh, Smoking Joe, The Life of Joe Frazier. Uh, that's also, it's sounding like it's going to be a great book. But that Tyson book, mwah, I'm out.